Clemson Life Program. She began her career of working with special needs individuals in 1996 at Camp Hope. Her undergraduate degree is in early childhood education from LaGrange College. She has a master's in special education from Clemson University, as well as a specialist degree in administration and supervision. Currently, she is working on her PhD at Clemson in educational leadership. Ms. Walters was a special education classroom teacher in the public school system for eight years. She worked, has also worked as a behavior interventionist, autism specialist, and elementary school coordinator for seven years in the public health system. Our other guest is Ms. Hope Banks. <laughs> Ms. Banks is a senior in the Clemson Life Program and is from Mount Pleasant. Hope stays very busy. I've enjoyed talking with her so much. And she um, not only has her classes, but she works at Mr. Knickerbocker's, a retail store in Clemson, and recently added a second job at a local coffee shop in Clemson. She's also a member. Yeah, I think that's great. She's also a member of the Clemson Life swim team called the Tiger Sharks. And she assists the Clemson University's women's basketball team. So y'all, please help me welcome these two great speakers. Transition. But we want them to live on their own and we want them to have 
employment in which they are able to pay for their own housing and their own bills so that they are able to just really sustain, be a part of the community on their own. That, that's our goal. So when you hear about some of our classes that we'll talk about, that's what we're aiming for. So overall right now, we have 23 students. That's freshmen all the way through to our seniors. Um, the students, you'll hear the, the verbiage is kind of changing with us. We have our, we used to be first year, second year, third year, fourth year. And then we were like, we want them to be part of this university. We want them to sound like every other traditional student. So we transitioned them to the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Because when, like when we introduced Hope, she's like, I'm a senior. Not, I'm a fourth year. So we transitioned so that they would be, you know, kind of compatible with everybody else. Well, then with our program now, we have our two-year, which we're calling our basic program. So you have your, your freshman, sophomore year, where you, they are living on campus. This is your fundamentals, your foundation. Then they have to meet a criteria to be invited back for this third or fourth year or advanced program. So now I can say, guys are AP students. <laughs> so when they're invited back for their AP program, that they, um, at, their, at that point in time, they're applying everything they've done for the first two years on campus. They're taking all those skills, and it's real world time. So they, at that point in time, they actually live off campus, and they apply what we've done. And <coughs> we're still there supporting. So it's not like we're throwing them out to the wolves. We're just stepping back some supports, Put them out there, we're there to catch them when they make little mistakes, mm -hmm. and we keep them moving on. But it's just that transition between of being in our program and then they go home to where they're from, and it's like, oh, now what do we do? Because they've always had that support, and so it's weaning it off so that they're able to um, function. All right, so I'm going to share a little about sophomores and the uh, freshmen and sophomores, and we'll let folks share about our juniors and seniors just probably really she gives you the real insight of the line. Um, but we do have clips of life classes. So they're functional classes. Again, this is something else that makes us unique from some of the other programs across the state. Their students may take traditional courses and then have like an academic support type program. Our students, because we're focusing on those two things, the employment and independent living, our classes truly hone in on those skills. So they take all the life courses, and we have special ed trained, they've all been certified um, teachers. They teach those, they do take traditional courses. They have um, a leisure skills course, I'll let them share about those, because they're pretty fun and they enjoy doing those. And then they also, we work with the food science nutrition services students, and they actually come in two apartments. And so we still have that unity between traditional students and clumps and life students. And this is just on the academic ground. We also have the employment where they do interning. We start off with the basic soft skills, what you need to learn, and showing up on time and dressing appropriately. How do you communicate with your boss? How are you able to tell them, I may need a checklist to make sure I can get my stuff done. If I have a checklist, I can do it. But I just need that. You know, how are they doing this? We're, we're, we start off with those basic soft skills, then they do an interning, then we move to pay them. <coughs> so we're kind of upping the ante there. We're trying to get them so that they'll be able to sustain out in the real world. Um, and we do believe 100% clubs blind. People are always trying to help us and give to us, which is great. But we like to give back. So part of our curriculum we added to this year was every week. We go into the community and we are serving others. We had someone uh, approach us last year. They're like, oh, we're doing a campus community cleanup. Do y'all you know, need anything? And we're like, yeah, we want to help. We had our students lined up. And we're like, no, we want to come help you. We don't need cleaning up, but we would love to. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's more of us than giving. We want to we want to give back because we, we feel like we want to be part of the community and be out there and visual and, and just to let others see we don't, we love when we do get help, but we're able to help as well. So what do you want to share about the junior and seniors? Yeah. Um, we participate in the seminar class, in the second class when um, some of the teachers would come in and we would just talk about like jobs and stuff. 
and it, like employment, we have jobs that we go off of and do our work and have wellness, we do like nutrition stuff and talk about your health and how to eat right, how to drink right. So do that. And we take one, well, this is girls course. We take um bowling class, frisbee, yoga, <laughs> um hip hop, swing dancing. <laughs> so we take those. And we live off campus and we have a few mates, but they're not um in the course and night program. But we live with roommates that are not. So we live with them. And we work 24 hours a week. So we just work our we, we work hard and do hard work, do what you gotta do, stay there as long as you're supposed to be, not be early, so that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we participate in the open class in the apartments. So we will have people come in to our apartments to just have a cook healthy, eat healthy, and stuff like that. So a lot of, one of the questions we get a lot of times is, what is your ideal student? Which is very hard to say, because we do look at a holistic picture. Um, I actually got a call yesterday, so was like, oh, I have a student who wants to come, and they're SLD, and I was like, I'm going to this ID. But it's a little different, because they haven't been tested in a while, and they're in this kind of class, and I was like, send, it, send your question in. Again, cause, because it's not always a cut and dry thing. This is ideal, but when, when the students come in and we look at that paperwork, and we start narrowing down, and you guys have a lot of, a lot of paperwork, so I know you get it. And you're just trying to get, like, okay, what are we looking for? And then it's, it's just always, there's, there's always more to it. There's that holistic picture of the child. And, that's what I share a lot with the parents. We need to know it all. We like to know if they've been out in the community. We like to know if they've had employment opportunities already. It's not always just school, and it's not just their diagnosis. There's so much more to the student that we're looking at coming in. We do want them to have some form of independence. We want them to want to be in front of someone. Um, one of our energy questions is, why do you want to be here? Because my mom wants me to. <laughs> Do you want to be in college? No. Yay. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> but we want them to want to be there. We want them to have the same goal when they leave that, that we would have. So when they tell me when they're done, what do you want to do when you leave? Hope, what do you want to do when you graduate? I. <laughs> what do you want to get told us on the way up here? <laughs> Where do you want to live? Here. Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 she wants to stay, she's from Mount Pleasant. The point is, she doesn't want to go home to mom's house. She wants to stay here, have a job. Relationship. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, but we want them to want what we want. We want everybody to have the same goal. We don't, it's, it's not, really sufficient to go through these two or four years of this intense you're living this whole life and then you go home because it's amazing how long it takes us to get some skills down and how quickly their walks will go So that's even over the summer we send things to their parents, hey, work on this, this, and this, keep them involved, have them cooking, have them cleaning. And when we have a couple, they've showed up, they're like, I can write a cleaning before. You know, we're teaching skills. We have them go home at Christmas break and the mom will call, they cook dinner. <laughs> you know, it's working. And so they, they can do these skills, but sometimes, just as parents, we don't um, give them the opportunity because it's easier if we just do it. Um, but then raise that standard. We have very high standards for our students. Um, so, and the other big thing we actually use a lot is our technology. A lot. Our students are constantly not just because they're students and they're all on the phone, like every place is seen them like this. <laughs> and it's funny because we go to intersections and you'll see our students and they'll stop and they'll look, 
the other students, they just go away. <laughs> so it's funny, we really get on our students. We make sure you're safe, but they need those. We make sure they're able to set alarms on them. They're able to do behavior stuff on them. They're able to communicate with their bosses, with us, with teachers. They do term reports in that way. So technology, just because it's this day and age, we're trying to have them be sufficient and able to utilize those skills as much as possible. So why clubs? I told y'all about some of the programs and I don't know their report. So this is why I would say come to Clubs Alive. We're looking at our students, these are our graduate numbers. So 81% of our graduates have are, are um, employed. The national average is 37. So that shows Clubs Alive is making a difference. The other thing is the independent living. Yeah, I'd like to see that higher, but that's hard. I mean, that is a challenge, and it truly is. We can get them jobs. The next part for us is giving them transportation. That's our huge hurdle that we're facing right now is how do we get the students there so they live at home so their parents can take them there. Um, Clemson's a great small town. We have good transportation, and you can walk to a lot of places. But wherever they go home, they may not have that opportunity, so that's a, it's a barrier. And um, that's things that we're facing now and we're trying to work that way to overcome some of that. We're working with some clumps and I car and um, trying to write some grants and stuff and we're working on getting like some driving simulators and stuff. It's, we've got to do something to make a difference at that aspect. I will say for students who did come for four years, the employment rate is 100%. So that's, again, it's just a testament. Is we're trying to show why we need these post-secondary <coughs> programs. Clumps in Life is one we're a program that needs some company, a little more support our students do. That's is why we do the independent living component. But if there's a student who does not need that and they can go and be successful in a traditional class, there, there's four other great programs in the state of South Carolina I would be happy to recommend. But this is just for us, this is what we this is our niche, this is our skill level that we're looking at. Those students who need a little more on the living aspect, and that's truly what it is. It's, it gets down to, they get vocational skills in high school, and they'll get a few of them in living, but not as much as living in an apartment and learning to cook and to clean and to make your own meals, to go grocery shopping, and, and that's the part that it gets skipped over, because it's kind of like one of those side skills. Um, not that I want you to read this, but I want you to see this is our staff and what it takes to, to run our program. Um, we are at 23 students right now, and they started seven years ago, there were five. And as of until last year, I'm amazed, I've only been here for about a year, I made a few changes, because they had two teachers last year, and um, we had two teachers, and some ILAs, which is like an RA, and I'll go into that a little more, but it takes a lot. So now we are changing our program a little bit, we, we have a couple PhD students in here, um, we have a few GAs, and they will be graduating, we're hiring some in, we're going to, I wanted to build a foundation so that as we're looking to expand our program, we hope by 2020 to have 40 students, as we're looking to expand, I wanted to have a foundation in our office to be able to support where they're going. So we've grown tremendously. Um, our clubs and live classes, just this is short sweet. There we go. Jump it this way. Um, independent living. I'm going to let folks share what we do in each of these areas. So, an independent living skill set, you want to share about that part? Um, we do have a little process. Um, we um, like them, like, put them over, go to the dining halls, and um, they have to make sure they eat the stuff they need to eat, because if they don't, they will gain everything. You don't want them to have that. <laughs> and um, for hygiene, um, we want them to keep clean, um, make sure the hair is washed, make sure that they won't get in trouble with that. Because if they do, they will get a zero, and you know, we have to make sure they get all that quite to have that. The zero, she's not, we have a behavior level system. So they get ones and zeros. And so zeros. <laughs> <laughs> and um, for cleaning and chores, um, they have to do chores like every night and 
Yeah, the, the, oh, that's the, sometimes they will have the bathroom, um, the kitchen, and the living room. So it's one of them that have, that have that have even weights. So it's one of them that have their own chores and they have to do it. So they have to do that. Transportation. Um, sometimes um, when the family comes for the family weekend, they go with them in their cars. But, but it was, if they don't have transportation, they have to walk to the gates. So I don't know where they come on and get them because the bus doesn't run on the days. So the social self-advocacy, that's kind of what I was talking about earlier when they go to the on work side, they need to say, hey, they don't have to talk about this whole thing about disclosure and what they do need to share. We said you need to share what you feel you need to. You don't have to go overboard. And, you know, if you feel like there's a behavior coming up, here's some things that you can help. So we're actually helping them with plans so that when they do transition out of class of life, they can just say, here's my notebook, here's what helps, and this is how I have been successful in this job and this job, and if we can set something similar up, I can be successful here. So we want them to be able to go out and support themselves and you know, just say, this is me and I can do it. I just need a little help in these areas. Um, the health wellness is actually something we added this year. Our curriculum was developed by the special ed teachers who started this program, and I say we tweak it as I hear from parents, and as I hear from the staff, and as I hear from the students, and what they have shown us, some needs are. And what we found out was health wellness is very important. It was not being addressed. Um, the nutrition aspect was, but then we got to the medication part. You know, some students, they, they were taking sleeping pills because couldn't sleep, but they did not, oh, it doesn't work after so many hours. He's like, I didn't worry about the hours. I didn't sleep after like 30 minutes, so I should have born. Like, we realize we, we have to educate them. So we're going to pharmacies, we're looking at labels. So that was just a whole other medication aspect we wanted to add to. Relationships have been pretty hot and heavy this year. <laughs> <laughs> So we do that with the workout buddies. And so we work out them to 
love them. Mm. Big clubs? Well, today um, there's one of them. It's one special event, and it's the girls' football parties for the girls in Vegas, and we um, get to meet them and see and watch them a little bit of their buttons and get their autographs and pictures. <laughs> so that's today. And we do some other stuff too. We go to Vegas Farm Park. We do a lot of cool stuff. And for social activities, which I like, we <laughs> do a lot of fun stuff with the students. We go to movies. We go, um, like, go on the walk. Go bowling, um, do everything with the students, and we love, and the students have fun to be there, so, <laughs> but you don't want to know about me because I'm very cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> Diggerbockers, and we have diggerbockers and puppets, and they have um, biohazards, podcasting, library. We have different other stuff that you can do. Um, and actually, this is a, a video we have of a student kind of sharing their experience with us. Um, so For this skills, we do bowling, frisbee sports, like ultimate frisbee, frisbee golf, dance cards, country run, cat country western side, hip hop, ballroom, swing dancing, <laughs> yoga, Pilates, relaxation and meditation. That's really a good class. <coughs> like I want to take. <laughs> and we do tennis and walk on and we take those class. This show that we're having at this home, but the one I'm doing, it will get us on. Because it's always you would go to college and dance. <laughs> so I'm not so. <laughs> Thank you. This is our friend Dylan. partnerships 
the, we had a student that from Publix and from Firehouse that actually got their jobs over the summer while they were back at home. And then they were able to transfer it to the Clemson offices or stores. And it was wonderful because they both have to be sophomores getting paid employment. And that's not how it works. It's not how it works out. It works. I mean, it's great just that they can do that. And so um, we do it on campus and off campus. The community has been great on wrapping its arms around us and um, allowing our students to come in and work. They start off that six to ten hours. Like I said, we do classes the first semester for freshmen, teaching them what it's like. Second semester, we start putting them in internships, and we're supporting a lot. But then by that sophomore year, that's when they're starting to move out more. And each time, they gain a little more independence, and we're stepping back, but still there, just in case. So just to see different spots on campus and off campus. Um, Clemson Broadcasting is a new one, and this is pretty cool because they, they obviously do all the Clemson Broadcasting stuff there at every event. And we went over there to um, make up some commercial for Clemson Life. And we had a student sat down in front of the soundboard, and he was like, please, Jenny Bundy, that's what I was thinking. And he was like, this is so cool. And then we want to come check this out? He said, I want to do this one day. They said, they told this that was spring. They called us over the summer and said, how do we get him here? They pick him up and take him because there's no transportation to get there. They come and get him twice a week right now. And it's awesome. They got him this big old fancy, you'll see a picture, big old fancy camera. His job is to go around. He's making a video for the year, plus some life. So it's meaningful to him and it's real life because he's learning the skills to editing. He's learning that he can take that somewhere. And so we're actually trying to get in touch with like Fox News. I don't know Carolina, Fox Carolina. Um, trying to get in touch with them so that go out and you know use it. So that it's it's really cool how our jobs are able to transition beyond just clumps and clumps. Okay. Yeah. 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 My favorite thing to think of is that five big reasons we need the equipment. And then the broadcasting is his job for us. And Zach is at Publix. He works off campus and is by iHeart, by whatever, almost about it. Okay. Um, one of my friends, um, she's working at Sedano. It's at dining hall, and that's where people, everyone eats, and it's really good. So, if, it's, they have really good food there. So, <laughs> and you know. and Ryan at Firehouse, um, he um works there on his own campus and his own his own downtown. So, and that's where people come in and eat, and that's where he works. So we've been really fortunate with like Airmark's one of the new spots. They do all the food for the university, and they actually hired a couple of our students. And I know they work with boat rehab, and they hire um, consumers from all over the tribes from the area up there to work at Airmark. So that's been a really good partnership with us um, because they're going to be able to take that on this. Well, and I'm curious for them because we do. She loves the athletics. We have a lot of support, support from our athletics, um, be it basketball, be it football, uh, rugby. I'll say our rugby team, which is the bottom pitcher. They were amazing. It's the first year we worked with rugby, and they went to the national championships. And they took two of our students and their families, which I think it was in Virginia, took them all up there. The week, and I was just like, wow. And that just to me was <coughs> just another way of saying Clemson Life's being accepted. And our students are part of the team. They're not just like, oh, you know, look, they're great, they're here, look at us, we're supporting you. It, it, it wasn't about that. This was about having them in the experience and really knowing what it was like. And so that was really a really neat experience for us to see. And um, we are very thankful. Football team's been great. That is all in foundation. They um, 
raise money for our, our program and they help us. And the athletics, they always seem to be able to pull in some of that. I think it's great. Um, it's like Clubs and Life, we are purely 100%. We start off as a grant and now we, we're on our own. So we're, we make it through partners who are willing to be you know, generous donors. That's, we get that a lot. Um, and that's, that's how we are able to function. And that also goes with our scholarship program that we've been trying to, have to get some sustainability in the program. So now we've started scholarship funds. And again, really lucky on the fact that we have an amazing administrative support. And President Clements and um, Mrs. Clements, they actually started an endowment fund for their daughter Grace in her name. And so that was our first scholarship fund we had set up. So that's an exciting thing for us to be able to say now we can even offer some scholarships. That they're not huge, but every little bit helps for our program for these students that have this opportunity. Um, so independent living. So we're going to kind of transition here, just kind of talk more about like life for these students. What's it really like? So they um, they live on campus. The basic basic program is your freshman and sophomore. They live in really nice apartments mm -hmm. that most freshmen I think would be really jealous of they saw <laughs> But they each have their own private room. They share a living room. They have a share a bathroom and a kitchen. And that was a necessity for us is because we needed the bathroom and they needed the kitchen because again, they have to learn those skills for the goal and the outcome of the program. But they live with three live students in one ILA, which is kind of like an RA, but we call them independent living assistance, the ILA, because basically what they're doing is they take what we've done during the day and they're making sure it's happening in us. So they're in there, they're watching them, and that is what parents pay for. I'll be very honest. That they want to know that at 6 o'clock when the students have gone to class, they've been to swimming, they've been to dinner, and they go back to the apartment, there's somebody that's just there. They're not on them. They hang out. They all kind of hang on each other's dorms and apartments. But just to have that of mind to know that there's somebody there through the night with them, it's important. It's very important for students. And I could not imagine um, the level of support I've had to give my child the whole time and then letting them go to us. I'm always so thankful they trust us. And thank you so much for knowing that I'm going to take care of your child. I'm going to do my very best and I treat them like that. And, and I want just to thank you for trusting us. And so that ILA is such an important person for us. And traditional university student, all areas. We have engineers, we have finance majors, we have special ed majors. So they come from all over. They just have the passion and part of their heart says, hey, I want to work with this population. How can I help? And so that's where a lot of these ILAs come from. Um, they are on their level systems that they have. The students have purpose. So it's level one, two, and three. And when they actually come, the very beginning of the year, every student is on level one, which is your most restrictive. And we really do that because we're not, we're, even though Clemson is small, but it, it's still big, and we're not just going to let them go. And they actually walk almost a mile from their apartment to class. <coughs> so when they leave for the day, they take everything. They don't really just go back and forth. Um, but so they do have times they have to have someone with them on level one. They have to be in a certain time. They're not allowed to have technology in their room because then they'll be able to all night long. Um, but so they earn points as they do think they show up in class on time. They're respectful. They're dressed appropriate. There's, there's certain criteria that have to be. They earn points. They go up levels. And then each time the, um, the supervision kind of decreases. Decrease. And so, you know, it's having even that first level, the first level when they come in, it's we don't want parents coming to visit. That's usually kind of tough at first, but just for the students to adjust to, it's about six weeks. They just, they saw them last week. Was last week parent feeding? Yeah. Last week's first time a lot of them saw them. So that was a, it was one of those, and we did, we had students who still slipped. You know, Monday and Tuesday, we had some sad people, um, and that's why, that's exactly why. And this is just as hard the parents to let go as it is the students. The students are busy. I mean, they, they truly go all the time. And it's the parents who oh, are they're doing. Are they doing it? They're okay. Don't worry. You're taking care of them. They'll FaceTime you tonight. That's how we do. So the level system goes up. But by level three, there's no curfew. 
free. They get so excited. And they're like, oh, three of the staples legs we want. Do that like a town. But they, the fact that they could stay up later, they love it. Um, so yeah, that's how they, they follow through. We make sure even as they come off level one, we um, partner them then together. So it may be roommates all stay together just in transition. So are the students using the cat bus system? They use it if they're going like off campus somewhere. I mean, they may use it to go to the grocery store or they go out somewhere to work or like they all ate that I thought the other week. But typically they walk. Where are these apartments? Lightsey Bridge apartments, so they're on perimeter. They're by the fire department. So it's a good walk. I'm working on that as well. Okay. Writing a little email, working on that, trying to move them in dorms that are closer to us. Way. We had the downpours that first week and they're all coming in. <laughs> oh, look at that, guys. Don't <laughs> worry. Yeah, I feel bad for them. It is. I hear they can make it through that. They can make it through anything. Alright, we do have a counseling component right now. This is a GA for us. And um, she's working on her master's in clinical counseling. And so she does group and individual appointments. Things come up and we'll say, oh, hey, can you work on this? And she may work on um, the, the health and wellness component, brings that together. And it could be working on medications, it could be working on relationships. We talked about, we've done a lot of healthy relationships and they've done some quizzes and just kind of base to let us know how they're, how, what they even see. It's very interesting. They're skewing some things. Um, and I tell us because of what we've done as parents and as teachers to them is, like one of the things is, is it a healthy relationship to always check in with your spouse or your significant other all the time? Yes. <laughs> but when we, we tell them to check in with us all the time, and I was like, ooh, I mean, how are they supposed to be able to delineate between the two? And so it was, it was very eye-opening for me to say, whoops, whoopsie, pop the hell on that way, <laughs> just from what we've learned. And so it's like, <coughs> see, us, it's, and we can take that back and share with parents, too. Is there some things to work on before mm -hmm. you and your student apply? Able to do some of these skills. They um so they do work in time or they meet with mentors. Oh, we'll talk about mentors in a minute. All right, hope I'm going to share about your part. This is kind of just a touch up on what she talked about. <coughs> um, we students with DOI, um, we live off campus, and basically we do what we want. Exactly. <laughs> it's what to do. It's not on campus. Well, on that, Hope had shared earlier that when they live off campus, their roommates, like her roommates, were traditional students that she met. Do you have like five star? I don't know how you hear She has traditional students, and then we have some that live with other clubs and life students, and then we have some that live with clubs and life graduates. So there's not a that way, it's just it's kind of how they are right now. Now we are just now expanding this program um, because looking at our numbers, we have five, and so each year we're trying to open that because as we grow, more being invited. And, um, either last year or the year before, the first time they've had this fourth year, so we're slowly building up, and that's gonna, that part will definitely we'll get a little more distinct on how we um, arrange the roommates. Um, most of us will work um, 12 hours a week at our jobs and we attend one business skills course. It's in which is similar to the rest, lab skills, because they will teach us how to do lab skills. Um, this is in the moment they have been and still talk about that for us. And we participate in coaching class in our apartments with food science and nutrition students. And we work on that with some people in the apartments and students. And we work on like, what is the fast food that we can eat. Uh, we don't want to eat that food because it's not that good for you. So we talk about that. And we participate in workouts. Social activities, <laughs> events, sporting events. We do a lot of stuff like that. So we do a lot of stuff with the students and 
and including the first years and the second years, um, we do a lot of stuff down. And it's a much fun to be with. <laughs> and we see the kids of course in the comments and the implement settings. So, yeah. So the food and science, the cooking class in the this AP program, this is the first year they've had that. And that we added that because of feedback from the parents who said they did great in the apartments on campus, but then they went to live on their own. It was frozen pizza, frozen burrito, it was like everything that was not what we had worked on. So what we did is we actually added on to that class in the food sciences so that they could now work with students off campus. Because it is totally different working when you're making food for your entire apartment of three or four, and then you're by yourself. You know, who's going to make yourself lunch? Let's be realistic. Like, what does she really need? She's not going to make this big meal. So um, we were able to <coughs> add that component, which was great. Um, let's have this one. So this is McKeever. He's actually one of our graduates. Um, Hi, I'm McKeever Thomas. Uh, I am a graduate from Clemson I. I um, now live here at Clemson University at Tillman Place um, with four of um, some of the students in the program. Um, now I am at, uh, now working at Spirit Fight. Um, what I do is um, operations where we clean machines, do laundry. Help with events and uh, whatever they need to do. Um, another job I'm working at is at Bottle, where um, I'm a bagger and uh, and kind of have uh, do customer service, uh, help help with uh, with buggies and chores and um, and so and that kind of thing. And I also have a car um, where my transportation was a bike, but now I have a car where I can um, transport myself around to work and um, home and um, those kind of things. I've learned um, to pay bills, to, um, to be on time for work, to um, be a, a leader. Well, since I first went the program, um, my third year was. Okay. Um, real quick about the keeper, so he's excited about the car. <laughs> One of the things in our program is students are not allowed to have vehicles. I mean, regardless if they have their license or if it's permanent or not, they're not allowed to because part of our legal set that up. So he was very excited because he said, hey, <laughs> and then he bought his own car. Oh. So that was really cool. Um, and he is one, this is a, uh, do any of you, I don't know, by chance, would any of you know, know him here has been sparkling? So he has a family who pushed him, like pushed him significantly. If you looked at his paperwork, and you looked at his IQ level, he would be sitting in a significant, sort of profound EMD type classroom. And that's where I talk about it's beyond that piece of paper because he could have easily just been pushed to the side. And then you look at him now, I mean, he has a car, he had his apartment, he has a job. I mean, the university hired him actively, he's hired on. So it was one of those that I don't just look at an IQ, and I don't just look at an IEP or the paper that comes through the school system. But you look at the whole child and look to where he can go because it's just real. I get chill about the thing where he where he went. And it was because people believed in him and his parents did not set. They pushed. You know, it made a huge difference in his life for sure. Um, so volunteers and mentors. We have an over 350 traditional students that volunteer with our program. We would not make it without them no matter what. They tutor in classrooms. They do private tutoring with them. They're lunch buddies, dinner buddies, workout buddies. Every one of our students is assigned one mentor, and it's a class they take with me. They are able to sit with that student, they set a goal for the semester, and they need to come here and eat and work on the goal. 
And so it's, they have that person they can go to. Like we can reach out to the mentor and say, hey, can you talk with so and so about this? They don't, they're going to listen to me. But they'll listen to a cool person who's a junior just like them. And so um, they have been fabulous. And it's just, we, we truly could not make it without the involvement of the volunteers and the tours. They go to the work that we were talking about. Our tigers start smoking, I hope the same. She's on. This is the first year we've had it. And it's our special Olympic smoking. And um, it has been a huge hit. It's part of our workout. Um, routine that we have going on our students work out three times a week plus they have tiger shark one of the other days um, so the we have a whole food nutrition exercise program that goes on another another school within the university is doing some research with us and helps them and they have to do some tests at the beginning of the semester at the end and the parents love it because they usually have really good outcomes instead of coming in that freshman and don't gain the freshman 15 like they most of them are dropping weight pretty significantly so that's been really awesome or they're gaining muscle mass which they don't do so um it's been wonderful we talk about the mentors it's just we really the big thing with mentors is what get them out take them out socially um hope and i are talking on the way up here about the different social events they do and it is the, the bowling, the hiking, swim. Someone went kayaking with their student last week. Um, they went, they did a field day. The brother set up a fraternity, set up a field day. We have some trying to do a whole field day for us as well. And so socially, even though we're not taking academic classes with traditional students, they are still heavily integrated within the campus. Um, cooking class, amazing program, because it's not just come in and say, here you go, cook this. They um, they come in, they model what to do. The menus are all, because it is a cooking class for food science nutrition, it's all been broken down into the healthy components of the nutrition aspect. And they even go to, as far as, let's go to the grocery store. We learned there's a lot of different kinds of lettuce. <laughs> they all have their own kind. <laughs> so now they go with them. They'll sit on the list. Help. Okay, let's go to the grocery store. Let's look in the produce section. How do you go around these different parts? And so they're taking it beyond just cooking the milk. They're not just cooking their salad or you know, pancakes. It needs to be a big one. Or eggs. Last week they did eggs. But it's going to the store, cooking, the cleanup afterwards. How can we make this different? What about dietary special needs that we have? So it's really not a long way. We do have a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, I will say this past year was the first year that the Clemson Life Program was invited to participate in Clemson University's graduation. We've always had our own private Clemson Life graduation. And um, this year, as I said, President Clemens, he has supported us 100% and um, made that possible. And when he announced it at graduation, he said, a new tradition has begun. And so I went to my board and was like, you know, tradition. <laughs> Every year, like I was really excited about it. So now, I mean, the thing in May, hopes, we're gonna be our Clemson Line graduation, which is pretty cool. It's a special one. They speak, they write their own speeches, and then we started a, a big tradition. They get the Clemson ring, and if any of you are Clemson grads, you know how important that ring is. Mm -hmm. And they have the Clemson Life ring, the company designed. It's very similar to the Clemson ring, but it's an L instead of the C. And um, it's super cool. So we still do that part. And then um, she's going to walk across the stage to the School of Education mm -hmm. and get her certificate going through. And that is just such a special moment for us. And to know, and that's, I mean, that's going to make a commitment of freshman year. You're going to walk to the stage. And, then, and it's just a great experience for them. But I wanted to let you hear this last video is um, from the Clubs of Life graduation. And it's, it's a couple different perspectives. And so just to let you guys see how parents feel and maybe some of the ILAs and um, the um, mentors. <laughs> My name is Wade Ward. Welcome to Tillman Hall, 
for the class of 2015 graduation. Hooks in Life has made up very many moving parts, and as everybody knows, things to run smoothly, you have to work together. Our instructors and our graduate assistants, they keep us moving. It's been amazing, and this day in particular has been the waterworks. Um, seeing the students change over the last two years and grow, they become super independent. It's been emotional, but it's also been really rewarding for myself and them. My experience with Clemson Life has been everything you would hope for as a parent for your child. They get to participate in what college kids do in college. They go to football games, basketball games. They eat together. They, you know, they giggle together. They watch TV together. They do everything that everybody else in college does. And Clemson has made it possible for these kids. You've taught your uh, mentors that being different is an opportunity. And I think you've taught us all that fitting in is overrated. I have learned how to be independent and live on my own. It has not been easy at first, but I have tried very hard uh, to learn to get over that. Here at Clemson Life, we take lots of classes. We take math, transition, employment, and disability awareness. I was so excited when I got to the Clemson Life program. I have many jobs during my past four years. Now I'm working at Firehouse, so I have been working there for two years. And I'm excited to say when I go home, I'll be working at the Children's Museum. On the weekends, it is a really nice hour. We go to football games and we have to go together to at the lab. We start with the skits. We done acting at a talent show. We dance. We have dance parties on Saturday night. I think anything's possible. That's what it teaches you. Anything's possible. My boss here. I started working with the friendship of football team. Yes, and you. Equipment, a manager. I have worked in four years. I have learned how to do the work, be a real time, and take life in everything I do. I see them impacted a lot. Um, I see them by me aiding in that one student, I see them reaching out to another and I feel like I am reaching the world through them. And I, I think that is a great thing. Um, not that everything I do is right, but I think that for some, it's better for them and it's better, you know, to make this world a better place. Um, um, Cooks and Life. We follow them on Facebook. <laughs> if you want to follow us on Facebook, uh, um, Twitter, you can follow us on Twitter, or you can follow us on uh, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Learning is for everyone. And if you 
we have if we make mistakes, don't forget to everyone and we fix it. I had a parent call. 
called me just like two months ago, and she was like, we're looking, could you send us some paperwork? And I was like, well, yes, I can, but you know, it's all here online, you can look. She's like, but I want him to think that you're pursuing him. I want him to be collecting the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I got you. <laughs> be able to walk off stage and have that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And you know, like in our students, it's funny, when they are walking across stage, everybody's like, okay, mm -hmm. not our kids. Like, you're talking full bear hug. <laughs> they, it means so much to them. It's like one of those, I think, sometimes traditional students can get for granted. Um, and I hope and I were just talking on the way down, she goes, I don't get to do that kind of special stuff sometimes. And I was like, you do a lot more than most students <laughs> just spent the very first game in the president's box. My uncle was like, I've been playing games for 45 years, never stepped foot up there. <laughs> Hope shows up at their house quite often. She, she thinks she lives there in a big white house. I don't name that dude, but we um, <laughs> called up um, the adult as Tim's class. So. <laughs> she was just like the family. They did. I will say, and it means so much. I mean, it really does. I just think these students get it. They get how amazing it is that I get to go to college just like my brother. Hope's brother goes to college. So she's right there. Yeah. His name is Davis, and so he's um, Trinity, and he's my brother. Sometimes I like to beat him up because he's my brother. <laughs> he picks me up too, but I bumped my back on it. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. <laughs>